And here we are in lovely South Carolina. Uh, and of course I found me a nice roadside pitcher plant habitat. Standing in about mm, a foot and a half of straight muck right now. I mean quicksand isn't even what you would call this. This is just this mud will just take you. But what we're looking at here is Saracenia flava var flava. And they definitely look different than uh, the Rugelli eyes that you see all over Florida. It is not very easy to get through this area. <laughs> and here we have a completely different variety. It's Saracenia flava var maxima completely patternless and anthocyanin free. And when you hit a nice uh, open patch on the ground, we got sundews down here too. Like here is Drosera intermedia. Spoonly sundew. It's my first time seeing this in the wild. All right, I'm gonna keep trekking on and try not to get claimed by this mud. Down here, we got a nice population of Drosera intermedia. Drosera intermedia, that is. Spoonleaf sundew growing next to some utricularia. I don't know the utricularia or the utricularia of this area. So it's probably maybe gibba, could be wrong. It's growing down in the sphagnum amongst all the Saracenia. Good patches of our maxima and our flava I really like these patternless ones our maxima just kind of stands right out like a highlighter green. This is a nice one. Bar flava again. This is a rather thick population, but the underbrush is so thick here that I could imagine if they burned this area, this would look a lot better. Over here we have some Saracenia flava varcupria coming up. Copper top pitcher plant. And the only thing that makes them different is that copper top yet again. Growing right next to more Maxima. A very large, healthy clump. It's glowing in the sun. Beautiful day here in South Carolina. And 
look at that. And here we have an absolutely enormous Saracenia flavivar maxima. Now, when I say enormous, I'm a uh, I'm about five foot seven, and it's right up on eye level with me. So over four feet tall, easily. Not too often you see a, a Saracenia that's as tall or almost as tall as you are. Beautiful location. It's just, you know, you're standing in a foot of water and the grass is about three feet high. But the Saracenia here are exceptional. It seems to be mostly uh, Saracenia flava var maxima, which is this guy. And you got a lot of mixed in Saracenia flava var flava, which is that guy. And every now and then you get spots of cupria as well. I haven't found any other species of Saracenia here yet, but I figured with the overgrowth you might not. Like the uh, shorter species wouldn't like this habitat at all. You get grown right over. Kind of shows you why these plants are dependent on the fire systems. Because after a good burn, this place would just be a solid field probably. Well, let's keep going. All right, here we got more Dracera intermedia, spoon leaf sundew. I really like these guys. Let's see if I can get you to focus in. Simply gorgeous plants. Any opportunity they get, any break in the in the grass level here, they seem to pop up and grow on straight out of the sphagnum moss. Very nice. You don't get to see these guys a lot in Florida. Their ranges are pretty restricted in my area. But here in South Carolina, they seem to be all over the place. And of course, Flavivar Maxima again. Can't get over that, uh, I love me some ornatas, but these patternless maximas just have a whole different look to them. Here's those Barcupria again. Here we got a patch of Saracenia flava with just the slightest hint of venation going down in there. Like just one singular little stripe. Well, a little bit more, but not as patterned as the other ones. Showing you the variety here. And these clumps are big and healthy too. And yet again, you know, this area you can smell the nectar from this many Saracenia. Look at that guy. Beautiful shape to him. It's a good day here. We're gonna see if we can find any more spots to where we're not standing knee deep in water. All right, on we go. So here we are in the Francis Marion National Forest. Uh, inspecting what seems to be the oldest, creepiest church ever. I 
have no idea how long this thing has been here for. But it's definitely seen better days. Yeah. I don't think they're holding services here anymore. Well, they might be, but I wouldn't want to go to them. So that's where the bell used to be. Back walls collapsing. I love me an old dilapidated building. There we go. Eat the rich. I could support that. I'll eat them. And of course, you know, it's a very old southern thing to have your creepy church right next to a creepy graveyard. Kind of ties it all together. Seems with so many uh, churches and graveyards around this area, there used to be nothing to do but pray and die. There we are. All right, we're going to go try to find some more pitcher plants. Here we are at another roadside location in the Francis Marion. Got Bog Queen Sarah over there. <laughs> this spot's mainly got Saracenia flava, Var Maxima. Every once in a while, you get one that looks a bit different. Like here's a Varcupria. Copper top lid. That's a gorgeous plant. It's a nice purple vein running right down the middle. Very cool. And this is, I mean, they're growing amongst four foot high ferns. At least in this spot, we're not sinking, you know, two feet straight deep into the swamp. Like at the last place, uh, I watched my beautiful tall queen over here sink about uh, four feet deep into the swamp. <laughs> Sorry about the road noise. And here we got a species of magnolia. You'll see these guys popping up all through the bogs too. And they smell amazing. Oh yeah. That's good. Here we got some, uh, some flava var flava. Amongst 
the fern thicket. God, when I see these guys growing in a place like this, I just want to set it all on fire. Just burn it. All right, on we go. And here we got a pretty cool find. There is quite a sizable spider lurking inside of this pitcher plant. Probably waiting for bugs to come. Now, you know, he has no chance of falling down that pitcher. He's, he's used to this. Down in Florida, we get lynx spiders, which is a bright green spider that hangs out on these plants. But I have no idea what species this guy is. But yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. Taking, uh, or using the Saracenia flava to his advantage. Oh, I am enjoying my South Carolina visit, that's for sure. I was hoping to find some native orchids out here, and sure enough we did. This is a species of Spiranthus. You can see that little spiral staircase blooming pattern. And yet again, if we can get the focus, those beautiful crystalline flowers. Always nice to see. Now, I'm not familiar with my South Carolina species, so I have absolutely no idea which one this is. But I know it's a Spiranthus. All right, it's getting hot. I'm going. Here we are at a new spot underneath a, a power line easement. And there's all kinds of good stuff going on here. And this is the first time I have personally encountered Saracenia rubra in the wild. Now this guy might even have a little bit of hybrid influence in it, most likely. This is probably a rubra times minor because you can see the difference. Let's see if we can find a straight up rubra for you. Here we go. Saracenia rubra. Now in this field you got Saracenia rubra, Saracenia flava, and Saracenia minor. So you get all kinds of hybrid activity going on. Like that guy there is probably another minor times rubra. The rubras are so cute. A lot smaller, but their patterns are amazing. And of course we got some nice terrestrial orchids going on here. Species of Calipogon. Yet again, I'm bad at identifying the specific species, but I know it's Calipogon. Here we have another impressive clump of hybrids. Again, that's probably uh, a minor times rubra. It's a special place. You can see how they like the disturbance. Now here we got a, a Saracenia minor, the hooded pitcher plant. Now yet again, with so many. Uh, rubras in this field it's almost impossible to tell whether they have hybrid influence or not it's a real nice one see the nice the windows on the back of the plant now you remember from our 
Saracenia Miner and Friends video that those windows act as fake escapes for the bugs. They think that's a way out, but it's just a way further down. And we got more, more Saracenia Rubra. And now this guy's a very interesting hybrid here. Now at first glance, it would just look like your average Saracenia Flava Var Maxima. If you look a little closer, you can see the influence of Saracenia Minor in there. Now the picture's almost hooded over like that. So that's definitely Saracenia Minor times Saracenia Flava. But you can just see the slightest bit of the minor influence in there. Cool one. Another minor. And they're just kind of carpeting the ground here like carnivorous grass. Here's a big fat Saracenia miner. Such a gorgeous variety in uh, one little place. You always got to keep an eye out for the smaller carnivores too. Like this field has more Drosera intermedia in it. Looks like a little, like a little tree, a little sundew tree. And you also have Drosera capillaris. Going right amongst all the Saracenia. Down here we got another treat. Never get tired of seeing terrestrial orchids. This guy is Pagonia ophiglossoides, or the rose Pagonia. Now in Florida, when I'm used to seeing these guys, they're a lot pinker than this. This variety is almost white. And there's a good number of them growing through here. There's another one. Look at that fimbriated lip. Get the focus for you. The one that's just opening. Right next to the Saracenia rubra. Here's a little three pack of them. Pagonia ophiglossoides. I like saying that name. 